Serious, concealed carriers of Reddit. If there was ever a time you have had to draw your firearm, what happened? I shot my date. She was bipolar. I didn't know. And at dinner her ex showed up. They start fighting I got up to calm them down. I don't know why. She garbed a steak knife stabbed him the looked at me with crazy eyes. She came at me and I drew and shot her in the right clavicle area. Police said it was self defense and I was free to go. No seconded date. Add on. The police must have had a slow week cause the one guy said this made their week. Holy crap. I could only imagine the how did it go questions went the day later. Yes. Once. I was visiting a friend at a downtown hospital late at night and had to park off site because the regular lot was closed. When I got out of my car I heard a woman whimpering for help. She had been stabbed at the gut in a carjacking and had collapsed in the lot trying to make her way, on foot, to the hospital. While I was trying to call for help and keep pressure on her wound, I noticed a car circling the lot. I left her for a moment and ran back to my car to grab my .38 out of my purse. When I got back to her, a boy, no older than 16, was standing over her with a gun pointed at her head. I aimed at him and said go the frick home. Get, the kid ran. I heard the circling car drive off. Help arrived about 5 minutes later. Turns out that no one could decide who to dispatch to the hospital, county or city. I'm just imagining you had a cute little pink purse with sparkles and you open it up, push aside your wallet, push aside some tampons, take out the gum, then pull out a massive .38 and get one of those. Ah here it is looks on your face. I was a process server and was trying to track down a guy. I found his girlfriend and told her I needed to speak to him. She calls him and I tell him we need to meet. He doesn't want her and I tell him I have to keep bugging his lady till we do. And if he waits me out, they'll just get the next guy in line to do the same thing. Better to get it over and done with now than to turn the girlfriend against you because I'm knocking on her door 6 times a day. Every day, the guy shows up with 3 buddies, all flashing gang colors. He starts in with the prepared threats but takes the papers. Two of his buddies have their hands under their shirts and the third one is trying to flank me. So I reach under my shirt and grip mine ready to draw. I know they're armed and they now know I'm armed. The main guy sees this and tells me to get the frick out of here. I've already done my job and got it on video so I swallow my pride, say sure thing, and walk backwards till I'm around the side of the complex. Spookiest 20 bucks I've ever earned. Something's out of whack with the risk versus reward equation there. So tonight I was driving home on a decently populated street in my car and I noticed a construction worker type pickup truck behind me driving kind of crazy. Okay, no big deal I thought, just another southern crazy driver. Well, next thing I know he comes up near me and cuts me off last minute, like inches from my bumper, and so I honk. Not a mean honk, but a hey here I am kind of honk. He proceeds to flick me off and is moving around in an erratic way, throwing his hands up, etc. While yelling. Shortly thereafter we are at a red light and I am behind him just waiting for the light to change. He gets out of his truck with a metal pipe of some sort a little smaller than a baseball bat. He starts approaching my vehicle and swearing at me, using fighting words, etc. My doors were locked but my window was down so I told him to get back in his car. He kept approaching. So I yelled for him to get back in his car. He kept approaching. At this point he was maybe 3-4 feet from my car. At this point I draw my weapon and again yell at him to get back in his truck. He sees the barrel of my sig. Drops the pipe. Apologizes. Hurriedly gets back in his truck and drives away. I was blocked on all sides by cars so I couldn't have driven away like I would have liked to happen. So that's what happened. TL. DR. This story involves road rage. A construction worker with a metal pipe, and the barrel of my sig inevitably becoming the peacemaker. I'm so sick of that never drawl unless you're going to use it mentality. You flashing the gun defuse the situation. Anyone crazy enough to get out at a light and grab a weapon is crazy enough to be put in their place with a quick reality check. A check that says, be careful who you go after they might just be packing. Someone tried to rob me with a knife. I pulled my gun out and said I wasn't giving him any money and for him to leave. I did not even point it at him. He did not want to leave at first so I said that if he just left I would not report him to police, but if he came any closer I would shoot him. 
He left and called me a pee while running away. I was shaking for the next hour. I've only ever had to draw twice. Both times for bears that came out of the woods in the middle of the day and showed no fear towards a large group of people nearby. In one case the bear left on its own, and in the other I did have to fire a warning shot to scare it away. My father has had a concealed carry permit for as long as I have been alive. In that time he has had a bunch of scary crap happen around him, but he only ever drew once. He was in his truck and a carload of kids, who seemed gang affiliated, kept trying to pass cut him off. When he stopped at a red light he pulled the gun and put it in the door of the car with the safety off. He figured if they were going to try and carjack him he would wait till one of the guys came to his door and obscured the line of sight. So they wouldn't see that he even had a gun until he had already shot the first one. Apparently, they all started yelling at him and one held up a gun in profile. Not pointing it at him, to show that they had one. I guess they didn't like that he didn't seem scared at all because they flipped him off and drove away. My dad is a pretty cool customer, ex-law enforcement and teacher. It takes a lot to rattle him. But the fact that he had the hammer cocked and ready to go let me know that he was really nervous about this situation. At GameStop with my oldest child just before Christmas. Two idiots start fighting over the last copy of some game. Don't remember what it was. They go to fisticuffs. We step back to watch the show, as I'm cool with mutual combat as long as it's fair and honorable. One lands a nice hook to the other's jaw and he goes down hard. Once on the ground, dude shakes his head and pulls out a knife. At that point I draw to ready and say, nope, fight's done. Pride put you in the fight, don't let pride put you in jail. He stares at me for about 3 seconds and nods yes at me, folding his knife and shoving it back in his pocket. They both leave in different directions, and the 17 year old looking manager offers me a discount on my purchase. End of story. A happy ending in my eyes. That is the most cowboy thing anyone could have said at that exact moment. As a concealed carrier, I was taught that you never get your gun out unless you are 100% prepared to pull the trigger. I've yet to ever run into a situation like that though, but people who flash their piece for show are retarded. I carry both open and concealed depending upon situation. Yes, flashing firearms is stupid. Open carry serves some very real purposes. Go to be careful not to confuse the two to uneducated ears. Twice, I had two men break into my home and attack me with a crowbar a few years ago. Shot one three times, the other ran and was never found. Guy I shot is alive, partially paralyzed and amputated an arm. Serving a 15 plus year prison sentence. I used to do food delivery and a man started advancing at me with a knife one night. In the time it took for me to draw and aim my firearm he dropped the knife and ran away. Police found him a few days later. Don't know what happened after that. There are many more times where I was glad I had it on me and never had to use it. Better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. I brandished my weapon only once. I was in the hood. Driving though after leaving the state fair, car I was behind stops quickly in front of my car, car behind me stops very close to my car, guy gets out of the car behind me and jogs up to my door and tries to open the door with a handle, but it was locked so he knocks on the window and says, you got a cigarette I hold up my pistol so he can see it and say, number dude's eyes get big, he waves out the car in front of me and goes back to his car, I drive away shaking and ready to throw up. Scary moment. TL. DR. Ice dog tried to carjack me. I show Springfield. Ice dog goes away. I drive home. That is a scary dose of reality my friend. At home and in a city neighborhood. Teenage girl and mom live next door. I hear yelling out front and see two drunk white guys harassing the girl next door. She's yelling at them to leave and they're trying to pull the door open. Put my gun in front pocket. Small cold mustang. Walk out on my porch and tell they need to move their car as it's blocking my driveway. Try to argue with me and I have my hand in my pocket holding gun. Get into a little bit of back and forth. The two leave off bothering her and start towards me. I pull the gun out but leave it down along my side. Tell the more sober of the two he needs to back off and get his friend under control. About then he notices the gun just as his friend starts up my porch steps. Grabs his friend and pulls him back and whispers in his ear telling him I have a gun. Drunk looks at my hand and first time I ever saw this. 
actually pisses his pants as the friend apologizes for blocking my drive and both get in car and drive off. Girl never saw gun and thanks me. Slip gun back in pocket and tell her no problem and go back in house. I used to deliver pizza, which took me to some extremely sketchy parts of town. And after one of our drivers got held up I decided I was carrying on the job despite company policy. One night I came back to my car after making a delivery and some shady guy was looking in my passenger side window. The dialogue went something like this. Me. Can I help you? Him. Whatcha got for me pizza man? Me. Did you order food? Him. Nah. Whatcha got for me? Me. Lift shirt whatcha think I got for you? Him. I don't want no problems. I don't want no problems. Me. Need a menu? Oh I thought you meant you just whipped out your man titties. Looks like milk's back on the menu boys. I no longer carry due to convenience, but I did once draw when I pulled up to my house late on a Saturday night and saw a guy at the back door doing something. I drew and held it at my side, just asked him what he was doing. He slurred something and staggered off, not sure what he was thinking, but he was definitely drunk. A few weeks later we had a failed break-in attempt. I thought it might have been the same guy, but never found out. My dad was stopped at a traffic light and some dude gets in the passenger side of his truck and says he needs a ride. My dad brandished his weapon without pointing it at the man and simply told him he was in the wrong vehicle. Needless to say the guy got out. Making a long story short, pizza driver sent to a crappy part of town. Group of youths approach car talking about how they would be walking away with more than just pizza. I get out of the car with my pizza bag in my left hand and my pistol in the right hand. They dipped into the alley faster than a fat man dips tostitus in Quizo. I got an 8 cent tip. I've only ever witnessed one time when somebody pulled a pistol. Me about 15 at the time. My dad and my uncle were on the way to the beach one time pulling about a $60,000 boat and had about $5,000 worth of rods and reels in the bed of the truck. We had to stop at Walmart and buy bait when we got down there and only my dad went in the store. The windows on the truck were tinted pretty dark, but not the windshield. A carload of hoodrats, white and black, pulled into the space beside us and started looking over into the bed and into the boat. My uncle reached into the glove box and grabbed his Kimber 1911.45 and hoped out of the door and asked if he could help them. They said no man, we just looking. He told them to get the heck out of there and they proceeded to leave that parking lot faster than I have ever seen a grand marquee go. Poor guys just wanted to go fishing. I came awful close once. I was leaving my martial arts class in downtown Detroit on a Saturday afternoon. My car is parked in an abandoned lot across the street. I'm about to cross when I hear a string of profanity followed by a clang coming from near my car. Turns out it's some guy walking down the street and he's screaming obscenities at every light pole he walks past, then slapping the crap out of them. He's between me and my car, and I really don't want to get into his path, so I decide to wait him out from my side of the street. While I'm waiting, he picks up a glass bottle and smashes it on the next light pole, then tries attacking the pole with the shards he's still holding. I figured then was a good time to get my hand ready on my gun in case he decided to come my way and mistake me for a light pole that needed cutting. He didn't cross the street, and as soon as I got to my car, I noped right the frick out of there. That would have been very entertaining to watch from a distance, but crazy is scary up close. I was leaving a modern event at my local game store. This is a semi-competitive form of magic. The Gathering. It's in a seedy part of town where commercial real estate is cheap. And I had well over a thousand bucks in cards on me as I was walking out to my car. Anyway, some little hood rat kind of body blocks me in a poorly lit area of the parking lot and tells me to give him the case I was carrying. Nice. Expensive looking metal case with the logo of the game I was playing on it. I put my hand on my weapon and told him no and he started puffing up and getting aggressive, so I drew one handed and pointed it at his center mass. I asked him if having my things was worth his life. He raised up his hands, backed way the frick off and tried to pass it off like he was joking the whole time. I smiled at him, got in my car, and drove the frick out of there. I'm not sure, but I feel like staring down a gun at someone contemplating killing them and having to go to trial and put your life and future in the hands of 12 idiots and a bureaucrat is scarier than staring down the barrel of someone else's gun pointed at you. 
The hardest part would be explaining what magical cards you had in your possession and convincing the jury not to have you burned at the stake. Just go for broke and say he tried to cast a powerful spell on you and bullets were the only counter. I own guns mostly for fun and sporting. Always thought it was kinda nice to have them in the house but never really worried too much about defense. I've always lived in pretty safe places. Don't have a family to worry about. One week last summer there were two shootings within a hundred or so feet of my house. After the first one the .45 moved from its case in the closet to the drawer next to my bed. With loaded mags. The second time I listened to the whole thing go down through my open window. Two guys accosted a man walking his dog to rob him. He told them to frick off and they shot him. It happened in a matter of moments. I was going for the gun as the shooter walked down the alley behind my window. I decided going after the shooter was unwise, and went out the front while calling 911 to look for the injured person. Cops were there almost immediately. Anyway, drawing the gun in anger was a hair-raising experience I never thought I would have, even though I wasn't in immediate danger. Changed my thoughts on personal readiness a bit. I actually don't have a handgun right now, so my browning OU is sufficing for home protection. A couple years ago I was driving home from my cousin's at about 1am. He lives in a sketchy part of town. But I grew up there so I never really worried when I was in that area. So on my drive home I rolled up to a red light in an intersection across from the city Greyhound station. It was a nice summer night, so I had my windows rolled down and I was just jamming out to some music. While I was sitting at the light, this homeless looking fellow walks up to my passenger door explaining to me how he is trying to get back home to Cleveland but doesn't have enough money for the bus fare the next morning. I kindly tell the man that I have a 5 and a couple of ones I can give him towards his bus ticket. And when I pull out my wallet the dude pulls a knife and starts yanking on my door handle. As soon as he starts tugging on the handle, I pulled my gun from between my seat and the center console and pointed it directly at him. He simply told me he didn't want any trouble and backed away, and I busted butt through the red light and drove home as quick as possible. In hindsight, it was pretty dumb of me to pull out my wallet like that, but frick that dude for trying to carjack me or some crap for being kind to a stranger in what I thought was a tough situation. For future reference, while some people may actually need fare, asking for transportation money is usually a panhandling scam or a way for muggers to scope you out. They rely on the fact that you are a good human being, and then they rob you. I am not a carrier, but I had an experience with one. I took my dog to pee outside my apartment and because it was late at night I didn't put her on her leash. She is walking ahead of me around the corner to the grass and some guy sees her first. He pulls out a gun and points it directly at her and starts screaming leash your freaking dog over and over as she is peeing. Probably 30 feet from him. She comes back to me. I grab her and look back at him and now he's pointing the gun at me and he says I'll shoot you and your freaking dog. I grabbed her and nope the frick out of there. I've had a gun pulled on me before. Not a CCWC guy though. I was in high school going door to door selling stuff to raise money for high school football. We all had to do it. So I go to this one house, ring the doorbell a few times. I was pretty unsuccessful that day and I live in a nice neighborhood. I had a lot of people reject giving donations to my school, and I was pee because these people live in million dollar homes and can't afford to give $20 away, Jesus Christ. So I was pretty annoying with doorbells. I had time, so I sorta hung around for about 5 minutes or so ringing the doorbell. If no one came to the door by then, it was obvious no one was home. I go to this one house, and hang around ringing for a few minutes. I see this shadow appear behind a wall and disappear back. I knew someone was there so I kept waiting and rang a few more times. All of a sudden this older gentleman, was balding and white haired, looked in his 70s, came running to the door, opened it and started aggressively asking me why I was at his house. I was in my team's workout gear, I'm also half black, and I could imagine he thought I looked sketchy. I try explaining why I'm here, looking for donations for my high school. He's still angry and pulls a pistol out of his underwear. Oh might I add, he only had underwear on. He has a pistol at his side and starts waving it around. At first I wasn't sure what the heck he was doing, but then a few seconds later I realized it was a gun and was a little stunned. I immediately kind of went down into a squad position, ready to run. 
I myself shoot a Smith & Wesson M and P 9mm quite often so I wasn't absolutely freaked out. All of his sudden, I guess, his wife came running through the house, sort of bumped into him grabbing his arms and pulled them down and shoot him away. Apparently he'd been going crazy lately, according to her, she apologized and bought two of the things I was selling, TL, DR. Could have been shot at by an old crazy guy while I was selling cookie dough door to door for my high school's football team. I was sitting in the Walmart parking lot, texting my husband. I saw out of the corner of my eye a sketchy looking dude walking between the rows of cars. I locked my doors, had a brief moment of guilt where I thought to myself, you're sectarian, and went back to texting husband. As the dude got to my row, I noticed that he was walking towards my car. I assumed that he was walking to his car, and that he must just be parked next to me and I was being paranoid. Then I realized that he was walking through the rows pulling door handles, looking for cars that were unlocked. When he got to mine, I guess he didn't see me because I was sitting still and he was, you know, a sea kid. He saw something he wanted in my backseat and started yanking hard on the door handle and slamming his hand against the window. I drew my weapon and yelled, what? Stop it at him, which was about when he noticed me. He must have suddenly remembered that he was late for an appointment somewhere else or something, because he got out of there pretty shortly after that. Jeez, they're like zombies when they are loaded. My roommate likes to carry his gun around, loaded, around the house sometimes and set it on random tables or chairs and say yup, I can carry that baby around anywhere and no one can do crap about it, really want to report him or something. He shouldn't have a firearm at all. He's not doing anything illegal. You can't report him for being a dong. Unless you're in our trees. Then you can report him for being a dong. My dad used to be a taxi driver. Once a guy came in with a BB pistol. He pointed it to my dad's head and said. You take me. Some location. And I will not pay. Dad saw it's a BB from the mirror. He slowly turned his head and said. Oh you got one of those. Pulled his 357 from the door compartment and pointed it at him saying, I got one of these. Robber ran away immediately. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.